Let us talk about the second type of cross that is back cross. We talked of test cross in the earlier uh, video, a monohybrid as well as dihybrid and that was to test or find out the genotype of the unknown. The idea of back cross is to improve the breed. So this is, these kind of crosses are performed to improve the breed of the organism. We'll take a couple of examples. There are three very important examples which we need to understand when we talk of back cross. But first one, we talk of this example uh, in incomplete dominance also. Suppose one organism is heterozygous, another organism is homozygous, recessive. And we want that in the next generation, these recessive traits should not be shown or exhibited. So, in this back cross, whichever organism whose breed in the next generation is to be improved, it has to be crossed with one of the parent. And this time, the parent is going to be homozygous dominant. If we talk of this cross, recessive with homozygous dominant, this homozygous dominant parent would produce the gametes containing dominant gene and the other organism would produce the recessive allele containing gametes. And in the next generation, the pro progeny will have all, at least one dominant trait. So we started with one parent as recessive and crossed it with the other parent which was dominant and in the next generation all were dominant that means all are tall here so we have improved the breed none of these are showing recessive traits so by crossing it with one of the parent that is homozygous dominant, we have improved the breed in the next generation. So the basic idea is to improve the breed and the cross is known as back cross. We will take the examples again when we come to incomplete dominance, when we take the example of Andalusian fowl. So test cross to identify the genotype of unknown and back cross is to improve the breed. It can be used for animals as well as for plants. The next cross that we are talking of is reciprocal cross. In reciprocal cross, two organisms are crossed and in one cross, one organism give, uh, provides the male gamut and in the reciprocal one, the same parent provides the female gamut. Let us talk about this. Say there is an individual A or organism A crossed with an organism B. The genotype is written as AA and here we write BB. In the first case, we are taking the male gamete from, sorry, the male gamete from A plant or organism and the female gamete from B. So the gamete will have A allele and here the gamete will have B allele. If we make the punit square, it's going to be AA here and B and B here. The offsprings will have AB. But what we have to remember is A allele or A giving gamete came from this plant and this gamete was the male gamete and the female gamete was taken from the B plant. So this was the female. In case of reciprocal, we will switch. That means now this time female gamete will be taken from A and male gamete will be taken from B. So everything remains the same. 
genotype is AA and BB here. Only difference is in this case we took male gamete from A. Here we will take female gamete from A. In the first case we took female gamete from B. Here we will take male gamete from the B. And if we write the gametes they are going to be same. And in Punit square, the genotype of the offsprings would remain the same. A, B, A, B, here also A, B, A and B. But the difference is here A was male gamete or was provided by the male gamete. Here A is provided by the female gamete. In the first case, B was provided by the female or B was the female gamete. Here it is the male. So we have just switched the gametes. Same organisms, suppose these two are the plants. In first case, one plant provides the egg and the other plant provides the pollen grain. We take the same plants in the reciprocal cross and the gametes are switched. Whatever was taken in the first case, its opposite gamete is taken in the second case. So this is the reciprocal.